Johnny Dollar. Dollar. My name is Hal Barker, Tri-Western Life Insurance Company. Out in Los Angeles, California. No, I'm holding down the branch office here in Reno, Nevada. Well, made a change, huh? That's right. Well, how are you, Mr. Barker, and what can I do for you? Are you available for an assignment? Can you fly on out here right away? Mm, I don't see why not, as long as you're willing to pay the freight. Good. Yeah, you mind telling me what it's all about? Well, not at all. One of our clients, a man named Walter Bisbee, has just died in a mining accident over near Virginia City. Virginia City, the famous old ghost town, huh? That's right. But now listen. Yeah? I don't think it was. Uh, was what, Mr. Barker? Well, I don't think it was any accident. Well, you don't, huh? No, and believe me, I don't say that just in the hope of not having to pay double indemnity on his insurance. Why do you say it? Well, I have no proof, Dollar, no proof at all. But I'm convinced that Walter Bisbee was murdered, that I know who murdered him and why. Well, tell me more, Mr. Barker. Fly on out here to Reno, and I will. I'll grab the first plane I can. CBS Radio brings you Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Tri-Western Life Insurance Company, Reno, Nevada, office. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Stope of Death matter. Expense account, item one, 176.25, a jet to Los Angeles. Item two, 32.70 for the flight to Reno, Nevada. Hal Barker met me at the airport, and we headed south on 395, then southeast on 17 toward Virginia City. Virginia City, by far the largest and most famous of the old mining towns of the West, with its quaint, colorful streets and fascinating buildings left over from the days when the Comstock Lode was the richest silver strike the world had ever known. Where it didn't take much imagination to visualize the grizzled old characters with burrow and pick and shovel who roamed the desert hills in a stubborn search for gold-bearing ports. Who worked and fought and often died violently to keep others from getting their hands on the precious yellow metal. And who finally realized that the heavy blue mud they'd been discarding was the real bonanza. Was loaded with rich silver ore. Here, you can almost see their ghosts walking the streets or stopping for a drink at the fabulous Crystal Bar or the lowly Bucket of Blood Saloon, depending on their luck. During the 23-mile ride over to this fascinating historical spot, Hal Barker, fill me in. Yeah, thanks to modern methods, modern tools of the trade, so to speak, Walter Bisbee and his partner did fairly well, Dollar. Uh-huh. They'd explore these old abandoned mines around here, supposedly all worked out, and they'd locate new ore strata that would pay off. Like I say, with modern, efficient recovery methods that weren't even known about during the gold rush days. Yeah, like the big petroleum companies have found ways to get more oil out of wells the old-timers thought were pumped dry. That's it exactly. And Bisbee and Hargrave would locate these profitable veins and take a royalty from whoever worked them. They'd go off and hunt for another spot. They made no fortune, but, well, they did pretty well. For a while, at least. Hey, you said Hargrave. Bisbee's partner, Hell. That's right, Bill Hargrave. Each of them claimed he couldn't do the job without the help of the other, so we wrote a partnership policy for them. How much? Upon the death of either one, the other was to receive 35000 Double that for accidental death. And now Bisbee is dead. Want to tell me just how it happened, Hal? Well, the old mine where it happened is up here just off the six-mile road, the old Catterwall number two. Catterwall number two? That's the name of a mine? <laughs> yeah, well, you should hear the name of some of them. <laughs> Anyhow... Old Bill left Walter at the mine a couple of days ago, exploring one of the stopes, while he drove into Carson City for supplies. Uh -huh. When Bill finally got back here to the catterwall, he says he found the ceiling of the stope had collapsed. Hey, wait a minute. He says. Why do you put it that way, Hal? Well, according to a state geologist I talked to early this morning, a man who knows the mine has been inside of it many times. There was no reason in the world why it should have happened, uh -huh. unless somebody helped it to. Oh. Well, that set me to thinking about the bad luck Bisbee and Hargrave have been having lately. And about how much it would benefit either one of them to have the other one die. Especially accidentally, on account of the double indemnity clause in that insurance oh, policy. Oh, well, now, Hal, that's... And then, when the geologists found where somebody had planted a charge of nitro... Oh, uh, well, are they holding Bill Hargrave? Why? Why? 
Well, unless the police find Bisbee's body, there's no actual proof he's dead. Remember, Dollar, Hargrave was in Carson City when it happened. Plenty of witnesses to that. I see. But he's the only person... I'm sure of it, Johnny. He's the only person who could possibly benefit by Walter Bisbee's oh, death. Oh, now, Hal, that doesn't make a case against him. Yeah, now they're up ahead. That's the old caterwaul number two. Uh, hey, what are they doing there? They're trying to get into the stove and find Bisbee's body. Oh. Yeah, there's a surprise on that hill on top of the mine. The man standing there by that block and tackle they've rigged up there? Yeah, that's Bill Hargrave. Uh-huh. And he was perfectly willing for them to try to get in there and look for the body? Well, yes, he was. And look, by the way, he's waving and shouting to that police officer down there. It looks like he's found something. Come on, Johnny. We'll see what it's all about. On top of the small hill was a vertical ventilation shaft driven down into the mine. Hargrave had rigged up a support, a kind of tripod with a block and tackle on it, then lowered himself to the stope where Bisbee had been trapped, or to what was left of it. When Hal and I and the police officer got up there to him, Hargrave looked like a ghost, or as if he'd seen one. There was a strange expression in his eyes, his mouth half open, and his weather-beaten face so pale it was almost gray. When we questioned him, he simply stared at us until the police officer took him by the arm and shook him. Well, 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 come on, Hargrave. Did you get down there all right, down to the stove? Yeah. Yeah, I got down there. There's a... There's a clear space where, where Walter was working. Did you find him? Well, come on, Hargrave. Yeah. Yeah, I found him. And listen. Listen. Well? He was murdered in there. Walter was murdered. <laughs> Well, the political conventions are long gone. Is it all over but the voting? Hardly. From now to November, we're in for some hard campaigning. Details, of course, from CBS News. And your candidate, whoever he may be, is in for tough sledding before he gets into office, if at all. Your responsibility to your candidate is, of course, to give him your vote. Your voice will help, too. But there's something else that helps put across a campaign. It's money. The best candidate in the world can't get elected without incurring expenses. If you believe in your man enough to vote for him, believe in him enough to get out and work for him. Then put some money on the line, too. That's the real test of your interest. We haven't covered the subject of whom to vote for, whom to support, whom to help with a contribution. That's strictly your own business. But if the people who like the other man dig in for him, and you don't do likewise for your man, well, that could be the difference right there. So think it over and make sure you vote. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Stope of Death Matter. When Walter Bisbee died in the gold mine cave-in, when a state geologist hinted that maybe a charge of nitro had caused the cave-in, both Hal Barker and the police figured it might have been done by Bill Hargrave to get rid of his partner to collect the insurance on him. But as they started clearing a way into the stope to look for Bisbee's body, it was Hargrave who took the lead. He rigged a kind of makeshift hoist above an air shaft, lowered himself into the mine. And down below, in a small space cluttered with the rocks and shoring and other debris piled up from the collapse of the ceiling of the stope, he'd found what was left of his partner. Beaten to death. Walter, my partner. Beaten to death down there. By somebody knowed we'd made another find down there. Easy, and Mr. And then they Hargrave. blowed in the mine on top of him. They murdered him. Don't you understand? Somebody murdered Walter down there. Okay, Bill, okay. Now, just, just take it easy. Well, you're the law. Now, you go and find out who killed him. Who killed my partner? We'll try, Bill. <laughs> try. Hey, sure. Dollar. You, said you, uh, you, you want to go down there with me and help me recover the body? Yes, yeah, sure. I'll have some of the men working on the slope come up here and give us a hand, lower us down this ventilating shaft. Okay. Him. And Bill, Bill, you go on back to town. We'll bring the body in so you can give him a decent funeral. Funeral? That's right. No, officer. What? Why not, Hargrave? Because Walter'd want to be buried here in the mine. The same as I would if this had happened to me. But if you made a valuable find down there... What are you talking about, Dollar? You think all the dirty yellow dust in the world would ever make up for a man like Walter Wisley? He, he was my partner. He was my friend. 
20 years together, like brothers we were. Always together. Always share and share alike. When I found something, it was his, too. When he found something, it was mine as much as his. Well, didn't you know that? Well, yes, and I understand the two of you did fairly well for a while. Yeah. As long as the two of us worked together, of course we did. We opened up the old Higby's Folly, didn't we? And the old Yellow Jaybird. Those were gold mines? And they still had plenty in them. We showed them where. We showed them where to get it out. When was that? Oh, back in 1950, 51. It was Walter and me found the veins they'd passed on by. They thought those mines were all worked out, but we showed them different. They still had gold in them. We showed them where it was, Walter and me. And the Jolly Tar and the Frenchman's Luck back in 53. Hmm. Walter. Walter and me. And now he's gone. Now he's through. Without him, without my partner, now I'm through. And I never want to see a mine again. All I want is to get away from here, here, now, and forever. So, officer, you go on down there. You'll find him laying there, Walter, in the mine. It's the way he wanted it. It's the way that it's happened. And if the law says it's all right, you can leave him there, God rest his soul. Well, now, of course, that's something that we'll have to... We'll have to... T and with those machines you got there on the slope, you can fill up this shaft and bury him. The way he'd have done for me, if I'd gone first. Mm. Now, maybe... Maybe we can do that, Bill. Officer, I'd be mighty beholden to you if you would. Now, you go on back to Virginia City, and if necessary, we'll we'll talk to you later. Thank you, sir. Now, Dollar, let's get down inside the mine so I can verify the death and make out my report. I'm not used to one of these miners' lamps, Dollar. Yeah. No, oh, I know what you mean. But I think we can see enough with them to just... Yeah, wait, wait. Look. There he is. Yeah, I see. Good Lord. What a beating he took. Yeah. Beating? Yeah, look, look at him. Look at his face. It, it's... Hey, officer. This man was knocked down and kicked to death. Yeah, these marks on him, on his face... Hobnails. Yeah, you're right, Dollar. Whoever did this to him stood stood right here. You see? Yes. Yeah, and you, you see the print of his right foot deep in the dust, where he stood while he kicked and and kicked with the other one. And he is Walter Bisbee. Yeah. Maybe we're going to have to leave him down here. What do you mean? Oh, two hundred and forty, maybe fifty pounds, up through that air shaft. Oh yeah, maybe you got something there. You and I, a couple of skinny guys, we barely made it. There was something around here could tell us who did this to him. That footprint. Hmm? Hey, Dollar, there isn't a hard rock miner in this whole area that doesn't wear shoes like that. Here, yeah, look. Uh, look, you see here? These other footprints, huh? Yeah, well, those are probably Hargraves from when he came down here through the air shaft to look for Bisbee. Yep, yeah, that's right. Same kind of shoes, but, but newer. Uh -huh. You can tell by the nail marks. Yeah, but does it prove that Hargrave came down here only after his partner was killed? Oh, now, wait a minute, Dollar. You, you're forgetting that Bill was in Carson City when this happened. Yeah, when what happened? The murder or the caving in of the stope? Well, what do you mean by that? Murder him, then try to cover it up with a cave-in. Now, now, look, Doc. Hal Barker you... says that a state geologist told him he found signs that a small nitro charge may have been used near the entrance to this mine. But if, if Bill... You, you mean you think Bill killed him down here and then had somebody else start the cave-in while, while he was over in Carson City? Let somebody else in on it? No, no. If Bill killed him, he probably set off that charge, too. But don't you see, if he was over... Didn't you ever hear of an explosion being set off with some kind of a timer? Well, sure, of course I have, but, but that still doesn't give us any proof that Bill did this. The fact remains that Bill Hargrave is the only one who can possibly profit by his partner's death, right? Sure, sure. I'll go along with that, all right, but unless you can find some proof that he did this, well... Well, I don't know, I don't know. 
But while you're poking around in the dark down here, I'm going to pay a little visit to Bill Hargrave. Go ahead. But why? Well, I told you, officer. I don't know. The police officer stayed inside the mine in the hope of finding some definite clue to the killer of Walter Bisbee. Several things convinced him that Bill Hargrave hadn't done it. What Bill had said about his partner, their relationship over the years. Bill's known presence in Carson City at the time the mine collapsed. And my theory that an explosion was set off by some timing mechanism was only a theory. Even the fact that Bill was his partner's beneficiary didn't prove anything. And Bill had been among the first to volunteer to help and try to recover the body and found a way to get down to it that nobody else had thought of. Yeah, very convincing. Almost too much so. At least enough to make me more suspicious than ever. Suspicious of Bill Hargrave. Just a little sort of shack on the edge of town, Johnny. Okay, then let's head for it, Hal. Well, of course, he may have gone over to Miss Crutch's boarding house to take care of Walter's things. Hey, you mean in spite of all their palsy-walsy over the years, they didn't share the same living quarters? Well, up to a few months ago, yes. Uh -huh, so maybe they had a falling out, huh? In spite of Hargrave's pretty little speech. Well, Johnny, I must confess, I believe what he said. They were still working together. Maybe Bill just got tired of Walter's cooking or vice oh, versa. Oh, after 20 years. Well, sure. Look, Hal, you're the one who was suspicious of Bill Hargrave right from the beginning. I know, Johnny. I know. Well. But unless you can find some proof that he did it, after his behavior back there at hey, the mine. You better do this, Hal, after you let me off at Bill's place. Go on back to the mine and bring that policeman over here to join me. Oh? Well, now, Johnny. Just you... do as I say, will you, huh? Did you see something? Have you discovered something you haven't told me about? No, or the officer? No, yes, maybe. I don't know. That, Hal, I honestly don't know. But there was something back there. Something you or the officer told me? I don't know. Something down there in the mine? Well, maybe. here we are. Here's the shack Bill lives in. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? Yeah? Maybe that's it. Yeah. What, Johnny? Yeah. Hey, listen. Before he leaves that mine, tell the officer to take one more good long look at the footprint we found in the dust. Huh? Well, just exactly yeah, what is that? tell him that, Hal. Then tell him to get on over here fast. Well, then you have thought of something to pin it on Hargrave. I told you, Hal. I don't know. Hargrave wasn't there. Maybe he had gone over to the boarding house to look after his partner's belongings. Maybe. Well, with the help of my pocket knife, I managed to slip the catch in the front door of the shack. I closed it after me and took a look around. Well, it was pretty obvious things hadn't been going good for Bill, and for quite some time. I looked first for the pair of shoes, one of which could have made the print on the floor of the mine. But I didn't really care, and a pair of shoes could easily be gotten rid of. Oh, no. I was looking for something else, but just what I wasn't sure. That is, until I found it, hanging on the wall above the cot where he slept, just to one side of the door. Yeah, it was an old lever-action rifle. Unusual in this part of the country? Hardly. There were thousands of these old 3030s around here. Guns of this make and type had been part of the history of the Old West. Still were a part of it. Oh, no. There wasn't a thing unusual about finding this kind of a gun hanging on the wall of a miner's shack. But about this particular one, there was something unusual. And as I laid it down on the bed and looked at it, as I thought about that footprint back in the mine. Hey. Oh, why, Mr. Dollar. Yeah, come in, Hargrave. I uh, sure. Yeah, what are you doing here? Oh, just uh, looking around. You mind? Well, of course not. Only you see, uh, when a man's partner gets killed, I like to know all I possibly can about him: his habits, where he lives, how he lives, how well he's been doing. Yeah, but this is my place. I know. Walter was living over at Miss Crutcher's boarding house. I was just over there taking care of his. Oh, you mean? You mean you want to know all about me? That's right. Well, now, Mr. Dollar... I... Sit down, Bill. And tell me just what kind of a timer you use to set off an explosion in that gold mine. What? Or do we have to tear that hill apart in the hopes of finding bits and pieces of it? What, what, what are you talking about, Mr. Dollar? Too bad the blast didn't fill up that stoke completely, though, isn't it? Wow. Yeah, then the rocks would have pounded Walter's body enough to hide any sign of the way that he was kicked to death. Well, now, look, sir, I'm So when you came I back don't... from Carson City and found the police were going to clear a way into that stope, you played it smart. Dollar, you don't You played know along with them. You found a way into the mine through the ventilating shaft. You found the body. You told us that Bisbee had been murdered. 
Well, it really fooled him, Bill. It convinced him you were clean. But you... You overlook one thing. You don't know what you're saying. That footprint down there in the dust. Oh, you changed shoes after you killed him. And no doubt you got rid of those old ones where no one would ever find them. And you left new prints with the new shoes you're wearing now to show they're different. But that one footprint, Bill... What about it, Dollar? When you stood there and kicked him, stood on your right foot and kicked him with your left... So what? What about it? And then when I came here a few minutes ago and found that rifle there on the bed, found the shiny spot on the right-hand side of the stock. Yeah, look, there. See how shiny it is? Do you see it, Bill? Well, what about it? What about it? Only a left-handed man polishes the right side of a gun stock when he rests his cheek against it. All right, The Dollar. same as he stands on his right foot and uses the left one to kick his partner to death. Well... All right. All right, so I killed him. But you won't live to tell anybody oh, that. Oh, you're a fool, Hargrave. You're going to be a dead one. Do you think I would have left that gun on the bed with the shells in it? You, you, you mean... I mean this! Oh, oh, oh. Phew. Son of a gun. I guess I really should have thought to take the shells out of that thing. Maybe there were dozens of left-handed men around Virginia City, and who knows, maybe there were some right-handers who kicked with a left foot. But Bill just didn't happen to think of that when he confessed the killing. Expense account total, including all the incidentals I can think of in the flight back to Hartford, two forty-eight seventy-five. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Constipation is something people don't talk about much, but it can be a problem for anyone, even doctors. And when constipation occurs, it's interesting to see just what doctors consider important about a laxative they might use or recommend. Well, a majority of the doctors we heard from had this to say. A laxative should be effective, gentle, close to natural acting. A medicine that can be used with complete confidence. Now, Exlax has been popular with many doctors and millions of people over the years because pleasant-tasting chocolated Exlax is effective. Overnight, it helps you toward your normal regularity. Exlax is so gentle, so close to natural acting, there's no upset. That's why many doctors and millions of people use Exlax with complete confidence. Exlax, the laxative that helps you toward your normal regularity gently overnight. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, a most unusual case where murder isn't murder at all. Where the whole thing is based on the confession of a dying man to something he did some years before. Oh, his confession is true. It's backed up by all the facts in the case. There can be no question of them or the confession itself. And yet, the twist at the end of the story, well, all I can tell you is it'll take you completely by surprise. So join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Truly Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Herschel Bernardi, Russell Thorson, and Forrest Lewis. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is John Wall speaking. An expectant mother and an adventuresome son are the elements of suspense next on the CBS Radio Network. WROW in Albany, New York.